Let's have a look at how we can simplify the composition of a trigonometric function and an inverse trigonometric function. So the idea is here that what we get after simplification no longer contains a trigonometric function. This is not actually very difficult. So let's have a look at this particular example. We've got the cos of the inverse sine of x. Now usually you would have the inverse trigonometric function inside the other trigonometric function. So the first step that we should take is that we will label this inside function, this inverse, y. So that means we now have y is equal to the inverse function of sine. And of course that means I can rearrange this and I can then write x as sine y. The next step is that we will rewrite x equal to sine y using a triangle. What if I divide x by 1? Then I have sine y, which is x divided by 1, and sine y in a right angle triangle. Let me just sketch one. There's our right angle. Let's say this is y here. Sine y in a right angle triangle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, it would be this side divided by this side, or x divided by 1. So what I've done here is I've taken an equation that involves a sine on one side and a ratio on the other side, and I've put it into a triangle. So I've just rewritten it in graphical form, if you like. But of course, this means now that I can write this third side using the, the other two sides, express a one side using the other two. So according to Pythagoras, this side squared plus this side squared is equal to this side squared. Or the side that we're after is the square root of 1 minus x squared. This is what we've got from the interior function, the inverse trigonometric function. Now, what we're after, what we're really after, is of course cos y. Cos y is something we can read off this triangle as well. So cos y, of course, is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So what we will get is the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1, or just the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that means we're done. The cos of the inverse sine of x is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. It's quite amazing that we can do something like this. And that's because, if we, re we can relate this back to a triangle, the inverse function can be expressed in a different way, and um, we can then apply the outside trigonometric function. Let me give you another example. Let's look at this one. Express sine of 2 times the inverse of 10 of x as an algebraic function of x. So I'll do it exactly in the same way as I approached the previous example. Only that there's a 2 times the inverse of 10. So what I'll do here is I'll just take only the inverse of 10 and I'll call that y. So that means I've got y is equal to the inverse 10 of x. And of course, that means that x is going to be equal to 10y. I'm going to do the same as for the last example and draw a right angled triangle. And now x is 10y, so x divided by 1 is 10y. 10 is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And that, of course, leaves the square root of 1 plus x squared for the hypotenuse. Now, this means that we're now looking at sine of 2y. Now, we can't easily read off sine of 2y from this triangle. But if you're looking at um, some of the trig identities, there is actually one for sine of 2y that can be rewritten as 2 times sine y cos y. Usually you would find something like this on a formula sheet. So we can now simply apply the triangle twice and get 2 times, well, what's sine y? Sine is the um, opposite, so x divided by the hypotenuse. So that would be the square root of 1 plus x squared. And cos y is the adjacent 
divided by the hypotenuse. And of course, the two square roots squared, um, and just simplify, and what we end up with is 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. And there's our algebraic expression for sine of 2 times the inverse tan of x. So that's simply 2x over 1 plus x squared. So as you can see, these questions aren't very difficult. You just have to wisely choose y. Put this into the whole relationship between x and y into a triangle, and then see how you can simplify the outside trigonometric function.